Good evening, Mayor and Council. Bruce Patterson, uh, 55. No. The, the, uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate the nice, clear explanation of everything. It looks like uh, we're actually footing the bill for $75,000 out of the $300,000. The grant is for $225,000. I just wanted to, you know, it looks like we're doing, we're footing 25% of the state is uh, providing the other 75%. Right? Is that so? Is that yes. Right? Is, is that like normal ratios? Is, is that roughly what they normally do? Uh, they like us. We've been pretty lucky the past couple of years. There was one that we funded quite a bit a few years ago that was, I want to say upwards in around 400000 Am I correct, Tina? Yes. And how much of that one? We, we footed much a higher percentage of the bill. 
Apparently it's about 200 pounds. So that was about half. Yeah, yeah I, remember, I remember Don saying, you know, we can normally get away with uh, a couple hundred grand in, in uh, DOT work. Right. And if we go above a certain range, it seems like the state's Exactly. So, so I, I guess that was probably the instance if we go Right. I think that was about three years ago, maybe. In mayor? Probably three. Okay. And also, Bruce, I don't want to mislead you. It's not as if the state gives you X amount of dollars. They say, they say like 50 percent, 75 or whatever project. They give you X amount of dollars. You can request you can request a million. They'll give you you know 50 thousand, and that's what you get. And if you have a project that requires more than you have to decide as a borough, you're going to put that forward. They don't give you a 75 25 split or an 80 20 split. They give you what they give you. And that's so, the way it works. So, so that's yeah, that's yeah. 25 seems to be some kind of rule of thumb for garbage? Uh, to be honest with you, I kind of have to say yes. Um, because um, the large municipalities have certainly got their amounts reduced. And over the past two years, certainly have. And uh, what Don had said, and you're absolutely right, the comment uh, you alluded to was that we're stored in this certain range. And that's what they give us. And that's sort of what it is. I just want to mildly disagree with that. We got. This, this is the most we've gotten in recent years. Mm -hmm. Generally, we've gotten about 180, 185. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was a nice, this was a nice little bump up as far as that goes. To the extent that other people are getting uh, reduced, you know, we, we got fortunate. There was an issue with how many products we put forward to get reimbursed, and then I remember we cut one back, and uh, there was just a concern about this kind of the optics and transparency of doing that. So we just want to be careful. But you know, Councilwoman Tedisco was very right. There were there were there was a project, you know. It really goes to the capital needs of the borough. You know, if they gave us two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, we got a half a million dollars in road work. That's you know, what we're going to do. Right. Just, just, just what uh, I noticed: the uh, professional fees are now twelve percent of the cost. Uh, high level. Thanks, Mark. Anyone else want to be heard with regard to that ordinance? Um. May I have a motion to close the public hearing on Bond Ordinance 14-11? I'll make that motion, Mayor. Second. Second. Thank you. May I have a motion to adopt Bond Ordinance 14-11? I'll make a motion to adopt Bond Ordinance 14-11, Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please, Ms. Henry. Council President Tarantino. Aye. Council Martin. Aye. Councilman Matthew. Aye. Councilman Mirsten. Aye. Councilman Cicelli. Aye. And Councilman Cicelli. Aye. Thank you. We'll be moving into our committee reports. Councilman um, Martin, the uh, police committee, your report. Aye. Uh, do you, Mayor? <coughs> the new police vehicles are received from Winter Ford. Uh, the uplift including decals, emergency lights, and radios has been completed. They're now in service. The old Ford Crown VIX will be auctioned off. <coughs> Excuse me. Today, uh, Gen Electric was on site working on the repairs to the light at South and Center. It was damaged due to a motor vehicle accident last month when a truck took down the traffic light and the pole. Pole repairs should have been completed today. We'll take a look and see. The costs are going to be covered by the truck driver's insurance company. Timeline commuter parking survey is still in progress that we asked the uh, chief to do as a council, and uh, it's going to be completed in August. The results will be forwarded for review when completed. Due to the combination of heavy rain followed by hot sun, property maintenance issues, which include tall grass and weeds, have been uh, have to have to be addressed aggressively. Notice we've gone out. Most of the residents are now in compliance or in the process of complying. Um, members of the department's bicycle patrol unit have been out and patrolling both weekdays and on weekends. The residents are encouraged to <coughs> speak to officers if see, see them. They can assist with addressing any issues that you have in the neighborhood regarding the police. Additionally, the bike unit, along with members of the PBA Local 117, recently conducted a bike rodeo with children at Hartman Park, participating in the summer recreation program. Basic, bicycles, basic bicycle safety issues were addressed, as well as traffic laws related to bicyclists. That is all for my report. Thank you, Councilman. You have heard the report of police. Do I have a motion to accept? You received and spread across the minutes. Do I have a second? 
Any comments? I just have one comment, Mayor, sort of related. Um, I just wanted to thank the PBA for their donation to the recreation um, program for the kids. I saw that on the website. You know, uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I should have commented on your report then. But uh, I know the captain's here, but uh, thank you guys. I think that's very nice for, uh, for what you did. But. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Monday nights at seven o'clock, but I don't know that 
their purpose is necessarily to, uh, you know, get the kids wet and enjoy. I think it's more of um, uh, testing their equipment. And the benefit is that the residents get to enjoy and get wet and have a good time. Every Monday at seven. It, it's, I don't know that it's necessarily every Monday at seven. It's if they, if, but it is on Mondays at seven if they have enough um, uh, farmers come out and be able to test the equipment. Weather permitting. Weather permitting. But they did have one that I attended, and they may have had others that I was not. Thank you. Mm, I don't either. I just go. We go to take pictures. <laughs>
Uh, new pitch pockets and flashing were installed along the entire perimeter of the roof. The new roof has a 20-year guarantee. The total cost of the new roof was $33,000 plus permit fee. Uh, also in buildings and grounds, I'd like to uh, read an email that we received from the company that uh, we hired to do a walkthrough uh, down on the roof to you know, determine if there were rat burrows. Um, the company that was hired through uh, the health department is a company called Pescon. And uh, the email reads, uh, I talked to Pescon this morning, and uh, this is from Megan Avalon, uh, who's from the Westfield uh, Health Department. Uh, she writes, I talked to Pescon this morning, and he said that other than some debris in the brook, the brook itself looked pretty good. He said that there were some yard debris in some sections and some concrete blocks in other sections that may serve as harborage for rodents. He walked the area twice, two different dates, and both times he did not find any active burrows. He said the vegetation was actually pretty minimal compared to the past years. Also, he had a chance to speak with several, resident, several residents who live along the bordering of the brook, and no one complained about active rodent complaints. He said most common response was there was a problem a while ago, but not anymore. And um, so, I mean, right there, I think that by someone physically getting into the brook and looking for rat burrows tells us that there isn't anything there. Um, and that's it for my report. So, thank, thank you. you. No further report from buildings and grounds. So I have a motion to accept. Be received and spread across the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any comments? Uh, yes, I have a comment. <clears throat> so we we haven't sprayed the brook in now. It's two years. We sprayed it last year. Sprayed it last year. We sprayed it late. We sprayed. It. And the point of spraying it is to kill the vegetation. Right, kill the vegetation, keeps the vegetation down so there's no burrows for the rodents or rats to go. Okay, and there's not much vegetation. No. So, spraying the brook isn't killing the rats, it's not putting rats, it's killing the vegetation. So, I don't, so what would the point of spraying it? Even though we have rat complaints, what would the point be of spraying the brook at this point? Well, what I got from that email was that you would not spray the brook because there isn't a road issue because there's no vegetation for that to live. So. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is even though we're, there's residents saying that we do have a road issue in different areas of town, there's no vegetation. Right. And so the rats are Because the only, the only thing that spraying the brook does is kill the vegetation. Right. And, and this report is right. saying but we have no vegetation. But right. here's the thing. It's, they spray the vegetation to get rid of that so that they can then go in and bait the brook. Okay. But if there are no active burrows in the brook, then there's no point for them to even go down there and try to fight off rats. Right. Essentially, that's what I'm getting from this. Yeah, right. rats are coming from someplace else. What I'm thinking is that the massive rainstorms that we have probably washed them all away. <laughs> <laughs> if they were there, they're gone now. What if they're living in the Gabby? They don't think they're there. Do we have a plan then for, for spraying? Do we do it like maybe uh, every two years or something? Or? Well, I say that you have somebody from this pest con, which, you know, what do they call it? $150 to do this. It was a real minimal That's amount. Good. Have this guy go in there and check things out rather than us try to determine or wait up until you get rack complaints. Let this person come in and Look at it. To spray or not to spray? Right. That is the question. Oh, the cost is $1,900. Correct. Yes, yeah, I think it it's is 1900 So, I mean, listen, if, if, if uh, we can save that money. Yeah. Right. And, and what did it cost them to walk the road? 150 I think pay 150 mm -hmm. to see if there's a burr out in the street. 150 and he went twice. So, really, okay. $75 to walk. I will say too that um, you know it was brought up that the water, the work that was done by the water company really upset the rats in certain parts of town that normally don't get the complaints. And I will say just also from the Board of Health meetings that I sit at, it's it's not really like Garwood just has this rat issue all of a sudden right now. There have always been some complaints each year, but Cranford has them, Westfield has them. It's, it's not really just a, a guard issue here, but, you know, so I guess it seems like if, if the brook's not the culprit, take it as a case-by-case -case basis and, like, you know, see if it is 
next year. But it is a great Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So do we need a resolution not to spread it around? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think we always don't do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Did we agree not to do it? I think we all agree, right? Yeah, we don't have to agree not to do it. We don't have to for the application of one on-premise 50-50 raffle to be drawn on August 8, 2014 at Crossroads, 78 North Avenue, Garwood, by, by Occupational Center of Union County. That is all for my report, Mayor. You have heard the report of laws and license, so I have a motion to accept. We received and spread across the minutes recommendation there to be adopted. May I have a second? Second. Any comments? Yes. Um, Perhaps I'm forgetting where we were. Bob, I knew, I knew you'd be quiet, so I wanted to, you know, pull you in. Um, now you're upset. <laughs> I'm listening. Uh, did we actually um, uh, direct the attorney to prepare that resolution regarding the need of redevelopment area for the planning board? Like, what we did, right? Which area? South Avenue. So we did a big discussion regarding eminent domain, not eminent domain, and then we finally right. uh, didn't we I did, prepare two versions of it? Yeah, we did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did we actually adopt it? Yeah. Okay, we did, because I know I had to discuss the plan we were one more night, and I wasn't sure we actually did adopt it. We adopted? Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad you're you correct. It. You brought up you brought both versions, you are correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up though. That it's kind of a bizarre situation. You see the language before. You had the language of both versions. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Right. That's correct. Thank you. The planning board hasn't met, I think, past two meetings, or right. I wasn't at one because we couldn't vote, and that's why I'm forgetting what actually happened. All right. Yes. Yes. It's a fifth amendment. Uh, recreation, councilman. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, summer recreation is in full swing with 120 registered children. On average, there are 60 participants every day. Upcoming events and trips uh, on July 24th, they go to Union County Trailside. On the 29th, Somerset Patriots game. August 3rd is Turtleback Zoo. All counselors go on trips to ensure safety of the children. Uh, also, I'd like to give a big thank you to the Garwood PBA for donating all proceeds from Garwood Rocks. A total of $700 from Dump a Cop and purchasing the equipment for the Garwood Recreation Department. Um, and all the equipment will be used, you know, for the children, obviously down uh, at the uh, athletic field once that's done. Uh, the PBA also had a bike safety and registration, uh, which was on the 21st. Uh, for the <coughs> um, so that was something good where they went over bike safety with the kids. They registered the bikes and they also gave a pizza, uh, you know, afterwards as well. Uh, another uh, note to put into your calendar, uh, the senior dinner is going to be August 17th, which is Sunday, at the Knights of Columbus from 1 to 5. The theme this year will be senior prom. Uh, that's all on my report. Okay, I've heard the report of recreation. Do I have a motion to accept? You received and spread across the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Any comments? I'm sorry, where did you say the senior prom? The senior senior prom was going to be? The senior senior prom will be at the Knights of Columbus. Okay, thank one you. One to five or something. I have uh, just one comment. I have to say, I know that uh, the rec director is new this year, and we had a long time rec director who did an excellent job and should be commended for that. But I will say, I took a look at this year's calendar because Brandon's still young enough that he still goes to summer rec. And I have to say, it was definitely impressive compared to past years. I noticed a lot of things in the past were just, you know, wear a certain t-shirt or this or that. This year I saw them much more activities-based, sports-based, and I think that that new director should be, you know, commended for that. And um, adding a fourth trip, I think it's very positive for summer recreation as well, which enables more of the children to be able to go. And it seems like they're pretty fair with that. If you um, don't really go every day, but you just want to go on the trips, 
you won't get preference like other children will that really do go to the summer rack the majority of the time. They have preference to go on the trip uh, first, but um, from what I've heard, it seems like they're having a pretty fun time. And coming from a 12 year old, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> I know they tend to get pretty bored at the summer rack, but. I'm very sure that's the Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Committee on Aging, Council President and Chair Aquino. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> August 21st is the annual ice cream Sunday party at the fire her firehouse from noon until 3. If you are interested in attending, please contact Paula Drogan or you can always contact me and I'll forward the information. That is all for my report, Mayor. Thank you. You heard the report of the Committee on Aging. We'll have a motion. You received the first request of minutes. Second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, uh, no report from the library this meeting. School board of Anton Council Woman to Disco. Uh, no report there. Celebration of public events, Councilman Martin. No report there. Any kind of air traffic noise board representative, Councilman Matthew? Uh, no report there. Athletic Field Complex Project Committee representative, Councilman Pinconelli? Uh, thank you, Mayor. The monthly construction meeting was held uh, July 21st at Borough Hall. In attendance were our borough administrator, DPW superintendent, professionals for the project and planning and construction. Uh, discussion took place on the new roof curving detail exhaust hood installation, railings for the handicap ramp and stairs, uh, water issues on the basketball court and baseball field were also discussed, and the door delivery. Uh, what has been done at the site, uh, permanent electric has been energized, sheetrock has started to be installed on the interior of the main building, camera wiring inside the two buildings uh, has uh, started, walking paths on the exterior around the facility are 100% complete, with the exception uh, to touch up areas at the end of the project. Basketball, basketball court painting is 100% done. And when asked uh, about a new construction schedule, uh, no one could provide it at this time. That's all for my report. Thank you. I've heard the report of the Athletic Field Complex Project Committee representative. Do I have a motion to accept? You received me right across the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. Okay. Any comments? Who wants to ask? Yeah. I think we all have the same question. I think so. Do we all have the same question? Are we going to ask about the mulch that was brought up? Into no. That no, wasn't was was a question, no, but all right, well, that's maybe you don't know I'll, I'll ask that question. Can, yeah. we, can we address the mulch oh. going into the drains that was brought up well, by the, the residents? The mulch that was put down is around the planting, the trees and plants that were put down that's on the uh, sand capping area. That's you know, when it flooded, it grabbed the mulch and it pulled it down. I mean, you know, there's only certain things that you can put down in that sand capping area that are DVP okay you know, to put there, and mulch was one of them. Is there something that we can put up that blocks it from not washing away? Um, I don't know. I mean, I can bring that back and, you know, we can talk about it some more to see if there's something else on it because of the flooding that did happen. And if that's something that, you know, we need to worry about getting back into the source. You know, if we bring it up with them, okay, they're going to charge more money. Okay, if there's, if there's, if there's, if there's something to, you know, because it's not in the plan, the plan basically calls to drop the mulch, which is, you know, we all have mulch, I'm sure we all have mulch in our properties, it's just standard operating procedure, you put in truck, take the bed, put mulch on. I don't know if they're the guys who bring it up. Maybe to get some ideas, but I would recommend not asking them because if they have to put something in, okay, yeah. Well, the person who I'm going to bring it up to is actually uh, Dan Toter from Hatchmont. Okay. You know he's the sure. GP, uh, you know he's the LSRP down there, so he's the guy who we're going to talk. To. We're not really going to talk to the contractor. But right. Dan's the one who's in charge of you know, finding out what we can put down and what we can't. Because the other part of it too is you know the point of entry of the storm uh, drain. I don't know if the new storm drains or, or if the storm drains that are out there have new, you know, DEP um, mandated uh, type of drain where you only have small openings. Right. 
because you get the small openings, you know, that would help too. And he did ask uh, half a month out to check that too. Right. But yeah, I mean, I'll look into that too. Well, you also just don't want to wash away. Even if it doesn't get into the you know what it is? I don't have the answer because, you know, if you're in a flood zone, I mean, are you, are you going to say, <clears throat> I'm sure some of that mulch that went into those flood drains, uh, storm drains also came from residence homes. Because if you have a flood, water rises, the mulch floats, it's all going to go down. Okay. You know, Fair. it's like where do you... Well, the other thing, too, you have to realize that you have to stand as a captain down Wash away. Sam absolutely washes the wet. That's what we had to do down there to cap yeah. the area. Yeah. And then we can't get rid of the cap because that's what's required. Right. So as far as what we put on top of it, yeah, mulch was you know the next step. Um, unfortunately, we can't grow grass down there because the capping is has no nutrients in it. And you can't grow sand. You can't grow grass in the sand. Um, so we'll you know we'll bring that back again. And, Find something else. So, what was the obvious question that I? Yeah, <laughs> no, that was oh, I get the. I'm sure it's there uh, or not. I think so. Um, so, the, we're not prepared to give a date yet. No. When's your next meeting? When do you think they'll give us a date then? Any? Um, we still need to set up the next monthly construction meeting. Um, typically, we've been doing them about two weeks apart. Um, the one issue with the doors is uh, the time frame. There were many meetings about doors, many discussions, and uh, as per their one schedule, the doors were supposed to be delivered on the 23rd of June. Um, and then we heard about a 12 to 14 week schedule for doors, and then I heard that we're seven weeks into the schedule. So uh, if you really have to wait another seven more weeks for doors, Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Seven weeks for doors. Just, just for just doors. But see, here's the catch. The catch with the doors is that there's still there there's still some framing inside that needs to be done to put in these last two doors that we're waiting for. So even if the doors come, the two walls still need to be framed. Well, I just have two two questions. The first one's very very unfair question, and you know, answer it at your discretion. What you got? What you what you think? Like when do you think it's going to be done? There? If I could go drive and get the tour, that's what I'd like to do. Um, what was my dad tell me? Just in your experience, and just having all the material on site is key. I mean, we still have a roof issue with the curbing and the exhaust. That that was supposed to be done in April. There's some issues there too. So we, that 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 needs to be redone, and, and, and you know they're working on it. Um, I can't say. I mean, I don't really have a gut on it because there's no material on site. And then, and then the other, the other thing is probably even more difficult to answer. Is there anything constructive that we as a governing body can do with this? In my experience in, in, in real estate, um, unless there was somebody there really being an SOB, these things just didn't get done. When you got down to the 99 well, percent I, I, I think I'm your person, right? Now. Okay, <laughs> right. I got. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I think I, the Marantina knows. There's a lot of email that go back to the yeah, I, I invite everybody to come to the construction meeting just so nothing doesn't get lost in yeah. cancellation. Yeah. Well, just, well, just think about it. Put that on your radar. Right. No more than no more than three of you can attend the monthly construction meeting. Right. Yeah, right. Unless you're going to uh, make it a public yeah, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're planning on going, you'll have to let the councilman have you going now so that we can count notes. Right. Okay. And Lou, you had mentioned previously, I believe, that the site work is done and all that's left is building related. Is that still correct? Yeah, well, you know, the buildings need to be finished. Right. Um, and unfortunately, because things are taking as long as they are, uh, certain things that I want to see get done, like, you know, the playground set was put in a year ago, maybe. I don't know, maybe a little bit more. So that area mulch needs to be redone because it looks, it looks old now. It, looks, it, it, it doesn't look brand new. So those were some of the other things, you know, that were discussed. So, but yeah, for the most part, it's, we're just waiting for the buildings to get done.
Zoning Code 1 report for June 2014. Then we can a Zoning Code enforcement officer monthly report for June 2014. Municipal tax collector Eddie Kerzolt monthly report for June 2014. Municipal Court Administrator Marco Marino monthly report for June 2014. We have a motion to accept the
the assessment is to equalize the assessment is about fifteen million dollars. The assessment, the assessed value is four million plus. So if anybody can do the tax rate, which is equalized. Well, I have in my notes that their taxes were $350,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's not, let me think that. Okay, but is the rate about five and a half on my wall? Is that the right? Uh, I don't have the rate. Is this Bruce, 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 you understand where, Bruce no. do you understand what it is we're doing? Yeah, it, it, we it, don't, it appears they're, they're claiming their property value is less. Right, so they're going to want to pay less to us in tax rate. So what Mr. Renaud is saying is we need to find out if indeed what they're alleging is true. So we need to hire someone to check that out to see if it's accurate or not accurate. So with how much we fight their valuation and therefore their taxes. All right. Because, because they can tell it's, it's legitimate. It seems like a lot of money is at stake. That's well, that's, that's yeah, that makes money. sense. It's a lot of money at stake. I mean, if they're going to reduce the tax about that amount, Bruce, your tax is going to go up. I know. <laughs> All of ours. Not, not with the good job that uh, capital has been We lose $170,000 from one taxpayer? All right, let's, uh, let's continue on. I, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Uh, yeah, and, and, and <laughs> Councilwoman did ask us. She was talking about it in one of her reports. Tuberculosis, I guess, services, $1,000. Yes. We're being reimbursed 20%. And uh, we want to push for full reimbursement from the county. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I, I, I don't I know, know it's only $800, but, you know. Yeah, but, but, but let me just explain about the county as if, you know, we <laughs> really don't know. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, three minutes. Okay, obviously this, this county uh, reimbursable rate of 20% is, is throughout the county, right? Yes. Okay, we've got $1,000 in services. I, I, I guess, you know, I'm just guessing. You know, Elizabeth is probably 30000 Union maybe 20000 oh. you know, and, and once we start reimbursing, the full amount. I mean, the county would be glad to give extra money to, uh, and I don't want to get political, but to their voting base. And the $800 that we're going to save, obviously taxes are going to go up because it's going to be distributed by equalized value. And Garwood obviously has a higher equalized value than, than the more, um, than Elizabeth and, and Union, and et cetera. So we're, the $800 we're going to save. The taxes to us, and you're not going to see direct, but I mean, the taxes, coming down from the county based on equalized value. It'll probably be about $2,000. So, so the $800 you're thinking of saving is gonna cost us $2,000 in county taxes. I'm, I'm roughing out numbers, okay? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. And, I don't and, know if the and probably for the additional, for the additional monies that they're gonna to have to, they're probably gonna to have to hire somebody, you know, because now there's large <laughs> um, numbers. But, you know, I, I can, I can yeah, be facetious, but I mean, believe me, I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think you better not open up the, 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 this. Uh, Chris, you don't care hard enough if you're right. <laughs> I'm not, we, we, we understand that. Yeah, we I understand, understand what you're saying. Oh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you do. Um, and, and in addition, and I did write a letter, and it's in here in the, in the uh, com communication. The, the intersection right here, and I, I believe you all read the letter, right? Now, normal rule of thumb that the county has been using is, is about $65,000, $85,000 for the intersection. And they have and they have this slated that they want to do something. But in my letter, I said, go out there and look at the intersection. It really doesn't need to be addressed. Maybe the light does, and unfortunately, we're putting up the existing light where a new light uh, should be. And and it sounds like you actually did do some footwork trying to find out what the new light would be, so you could replace it maybe with with that light. And, and obviously, the county, in their imperialism, you know, the term that. Has been you know, doesn't care. And then I suggest this, why don't you do the curves instead with that money and just tell the county, forget about the intersection money. Well, you know, coming down, I talked to uh, Director Graziano, who's the head of engineering in the DPW down there, and he mentioned that the, the curves are not done by the county. And this we probably knew all along, but I thought maybe we can get a trade off. Well, bottom line, the curves are gonna be done. That's gonna be our, our uh, headache to cover. Whether we do it or not, something else. But meanwhile, the county just is looking to spend money, and and they're going to upgrade the intersection, whether it's needed or not. They're going to spend that money, and the professional services. And again, just not to get in, you know, belabor the point about the county. They just look to spend 
money for professional services because oddly enough, and just by coincidence, the professional service firms seem to donate to them. So I mean, like, you know, they're, they're not gonna, they're, they're not gonna go away, but maybe you should do something, pass some kind of resolution or proclamation saying, put our intersection at the end of your list of all the intersections. You don't need them to spend more money.
program for her captain's daughter, who's past weekend, as well as to the Hurl family for the other passing of uh, long-term uh, Sharon Ralph Hurl. Um, thank you for that as part of the record. The regular, next regular meeting of the mayor and council will be held on Tuesday, August 12, 2014, in council chambers at 7 15 p.m. Workshop session will start at 7. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you very much.